that you follow. Okay. Hmm. Speaking about the optics. Now, for optics, I want to tell you some very important things. First of all, we're going to learn about the converging lens. Converging lens, kids, is basically also known as the convex lens. And then we have diverging lens, which is also known as the concave lens. When I was like you in my IGCSCs, what I did was that I remembered that it looks like a bulge inside like a cave so i used to think okay it's a cave okay that's a very stupid thing of me but that's how i remembered it what converging lens does is that when light basically goes through it converges the light rays to a single point why why do they bend it is due to refraction. So it passes through the glass curved surface and then it slows down and then refract to a single point. So it bends all rays to a single point. Whereas diverging lens basically causes the rays to move away from the lens like that they have their own uses so basically bends all rays away from a single point though that single point is like a virtual point does exist at the back but it's like going away from that point. All these rays are coming towards the point. Do you guys understand that? Like this. Very good, kids. Wait a second. Let me. I need another screen to monitor you people. One second. Wait. Let me log in from there as well. Okay, now I can see all of you. Fair enough. So then we have to understand when we're doing this, we need to see that exactly at the center of any lens, we have a point that is called optical center. A straight line from the middle goes and it is called the principal axis. And then you have two points. These points are called focal points. This is also a focal point. And from the center of the lens to the focal point, we call this as the distance is called the focal length. If you go two times the focal length at a distance two times about that, so you have two F points. Will you guys be able to remember that? All right, very good, very good, very good. So now, when you have this, you guys need to remember that you can just quickly write this down so we can, you know, go forward. Okay. There are two things to note here, to write a note, and that is that all rays except of the one that passes through optical center will pass from focal point, which is F. Now, ray that passes through 
the optical center is undeviated like it doesn't bend at all so these are two important things that you guys need to remember so please write this down okay rithaj you missed what happened to you so what does the last word mean undeviated means that it will not bend at all it will just go straight okay bad okay very good okay, now my friends i'm going to go to the next and one by one we are going to learn how to draw these uh diagrams they're pretty easy to draw not a big deal first of all if we keep an object beyond beyond 2f so let's draw so you have to basically use your ruler for this yes rubesh you can write it i'm sorry about that Sir, can you go a little more? Yes. Is it fine now? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next now. So, done, kids. Should I go forward, please? Okay, very good. So, if I basically put an object, so how you draw this? So beyond two F, I'm going to put an object right here. Just put your object here. I'm going to show you how to do this. Please follow through. when you have an object like this the first ray that you're going to draw is from the top of this object straight towards the lens like that so this is the the converging lens i've just made the center of it this will be your first step all right kids next you will take this ray and you will pass it through f use your ruler to do that please like that and this will be your second ray then what you need to do is you will take another ray from the same point and you will pass it through the optical center optical center is the middle of the lens right here and wherever these two rays are going to meet that is the point where this arrow or the object is going to form just like that is that clear kids so this is the object and this would be your image so generally the examiner is happy with three steps but if he asks you if he says they draw another ray then what you do yes i will do it again so first of all please try to understand that this is your optical center right here this is the center of the lens you will let's suppose the object is right here it looks like this okay two boxes tall the first step 
Usman is that you take the ray straight till the center of the lens. This is your first step. Do it please with me. This is your object. Then the same ray from the middle, you pass it through the point F, the focal lens, like that. This is the second step. Do it, please, everyone. Then the third ray, you basically draw it from the same point, but pass it through the optical center. Optical center is the middle one. You just make it straight. It doesn't bend like I've told you. You've written it at the top as well. Understood? Where these two rays are going to meet, like they meet right here, just draw the object right here. So this will be your image, sorry. Image I. Get it? So generally, this is enough when they ask you to draw this. But if they say, if they say that you have to draw more, what you do is you basically take a ray from F initially, move it through the lens straight, and then make it straight like that. So it will automatically pass through the this point all right like that it's not snapping my 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 you know ipad doesn't snap here but chal. so this way where it matches that is going to be your third ray if they say you got to draw another ray otherwise it's not required all the time is that clear kids just like that yeah yes of course The image will be, now I'm going to tell you, as you can see, the image basically forms before 2F. It doesn't form, yeah, yeah. If you put the object beyond 2F, the image will be before 2F. That's how it's going to be. Understood? Okay. Now we need to learn some of the properties, okay? First of all, if the rays are meeting, the first property of this is that this has got to be a real image. Why is it a real image? Because rays meet at a point. Then, if you see, the arrow that we drew is upside down. So it is inverted. Image is inverted. Number three, if you see, it is smaller than object, which basically means the word that we use for this is that it is diminished. D-I-D-I-M-I-N-I-S-H-E-D. -I 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 -E it's called diminished. Get it, kids? Very good. You should draw this. And let me know when you're done. The example of this is basically, will we have to draw where rays don't meet in others? Yes, Rabia, we will draw all the cases. I'll teach you all of these. The example for this is human eye or camera. You see, if you go far enough, can you see the whole Burj Khalifa? No, no, you don't have to draw the lens. Why you don't have to? The lens is like this, you know, the lens is like that. We just need the center of the lens. This is what we need. Okay. But you can if you want to, that's fine. If you go far enough, you can see the whole Burj Khalifa. You know why? Because the Burj Khalifa. 
you see from your eyeball, which is a con converging lens, basically. And that shows you that if you go far enough, the object is beyond 2f, it becomes, uh, it shows you the image forms of a smaller size. That's why we are able to see that. Is that clear, kids? Yes, Maha will do the uh, diverging one as well, one case for that. You guys just need to wait and hold, okay? Should I go forward? Everybody understands this? Hmm. Done. Now we will like, you know, the intellectual curiosity like you have, this is very good. We're going to check what happens, what really happens when we place the object at 2f. So now we're going to place the object, object at 2f. Yes, because a phrase, it basically causes it to, uh, it processes and shows you uh, upside down. So that's why you can see it. Otherwise, it is upside down. Always. All right. So if you put the object at exactly 2f, so what's going to happen? Let's check it out. Yes, Maha. That is an interesting fact, you know. We do every, we see everything upside down, but our brain processes it just like a camera. That's why. Okay. Now, kids, when you put something at 2f, you're going to go straight first. First line straight. This is the object. Then the same line needs to go through f. You're going to take it there. You also draw this piece. The third line from the same point, but through the optical center, and it would pass like that. Now, if you notice, the image also forms at 2f and also the object was of two boxes the image is also of two boxes do you guys understand that that's the third ray got to draw if i want to write where the image is i will say at 2f as well what are the properties number one it is a real image. Why it is a real image? Because as you can see, the rays meet. All the rays meet at a certain point. Then it is an inverted image because it is upside down. Then it is of same size. So these are the three properties of this image. All right. Any questions here? Please let me know. Same size as object. Yes, yes. You can write it. It's okay. The example of this is a photocopier. If you place a piece of paper over on the photocopier in the photocopier machine, it would give you the same sized print. Why? Because the lens in it basically places that object or the paper at 2f and then prints the image at 2f as well. Understood, kids? Yeah, very good. Okay. Shinig Mustafa. How are you, Mustafa? You, Mustafa, why didn't you come yesterday? What happened to you? Uh, sir, I was. I had to go some. I had to go somewhere urgently. Okay. Uh, Usman, F means it is the focal point. Focal point is basically a certain point where all, all rays bend to. Okay. And it has a length from the lens. So let's suppose it is two centimeter from, I'm just giving an example, two centimeter from lens. So 2f will be a point four centimeter from the lens. So it means twice the distance away from the lens. Is that clear? 
Yeah, very good. So now, then we'll go to the, I hope you guys have written this. Usman, everything is clear. Should I go forward, please? Yes. Very good. Now let's move to this. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to put the object before 2f. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to put the object right here. And let's see what really happens. So first ray, again, straight to the lens. The second ray from the same point passing through f, the focal point. The third ray, just keep arrows. The third ray goes from the same point through the optical center undeviated. And if you see, it forms the image somewhere here, which is very big, like that. This is the image. This is the object. If I ask you, if I ask you the properties, so what would be the property, the first property, what you're going to write? Enlarged. It is, no, always you have to write the first one that it is the real image. This is mandatory, all right? Yes, it is not virtual. Virtual means that rays would not meet. The rays are meeting, so it must be uh, real. Number two, like you guys said, it is enlarged. Very good. So and... how is it a real image? Sorry, come again, Aisha. How is it real image? Because the rays, if you see the rays that came out of it, they meet at a certain point. So if the rays meet, it has to be a real real image. Okay. Do you understand that? Yes. And upside down, very good. Upside down means that it is inverted. Very good. That's very nice. That's very nice. Any person who could not understand this, please let me know. Yes, because the most we cannot then create that image if you don't have the third ray. You know, this third ray actually meets up here to know where the image is. Get it? It is not used in magnifying glasses. That is wrong. It is basically an example of binoculars. Magnifying glass does not create a real image. It is a virtual image. I'll tell you why in a bit. All right, kids. Very good. And Masa, everything is clear now? Maha, everything is clear? Bipesh? Very good. Now we're going to move to the next. You guys are drawing this? Should I slow down? Or done? Okay. Fine. Then we have the third type and we're going to put an object at F. So if I put an object at F like that, so what's going to happen? Let's see. What is the object when you're using the binocular? The object, the one that you're looking at. So basically, you put the binocular. Binoculars have multiple lenses. They basically see an object uh, that is like a building or something. Because binoculars have a very long focal length. It is in uh, meters and kilometers like that. Depends on the binocular. Do you understand, Afraz? Yes, they have very thick lenses. You will, if you have a binocular, check it out. It has very thick lens. That's why. All right. So if you place the object at F, what happens? Let's check it. This is the, the, the most cool one and the easiest one as well. So you're going to make a first ray straight. 
to the lens. Then the next ray goes through F like that. And then the next ray goes through the optical center. You would be surprised that these two rays are parallel. And parallel rays never meet. And if they do not meet, so that means that no image is formed. What do you see then? You just see a beam of light. Do you guys understand that? Now, the beam of light, an example, the real example is basically those, uh, you know, I don't know what those are called. Have you seen those lights which uh, are used in um, decor? Yeah, image. No, image will never be able to form. You cannot write infinity. It's not formed at all. OK. Okay, so I was saying, who has seen, who has seen that uh, bat signal? I think everybody has, right? Do you know how bat signal works? It's basically that beam of light that is goes through a lens. And then they have basically created that sign like that. And when the beam of light goes parallel to it, it just creates that shadow of the bat within that light. It is not an image, actually. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. The bat signal, the Batman signal. Have you seen that? To call the Batman. Gotham yes. Police has it. Right? So that's basically an example of this. Usman, how is it possible that you haven't seen the bad signal? How is that possible? Everybody in the world has seen it. Let me show you that. It's all right. Yes, Commissioner Gordon. Yes, exactly. So bad signal is an example of a beam of light, just like this. So it's basically the beam is created through that lens. And then it is just the shadow that appears there. The signal is of shadow. The other thing is just a beam. As you can see, it's coming from a source. Do you guys understand that? And if you see here, you would realize, see? This is a lens, there's a light, and it goes like that. Cool, right? Do you understand now? Oh, it's OK, Mariam. It's all right. Now do you see the bad signal? So it's just basically a beam of light. OK, done, kids. Should I go forward now? But if there is a mirror in the way, these parallel rays, then image will be formed. If there is a mirror, then it would not be formed because mirror would basically reflect them at different angles, and it would also laterally invert it. So the same kind of image cannot be formed.
okay Na next is the converging lens uh, depends on the focal point if sir if you put a convex lens in front of them convex lens you mean the yeah this is a convex lens you oh yeah it depends on the focal point that's correct the it depends on the convex lens you're putting in yes that's true that is so true that is so true okay now let's go forward let's check huh? everybody's clear should i go forward please what do you guys say hasan you're late very bad okay now what will happen if we put the object before f so let's do that if you put an object before f like this so i'm going to put a small object because generally we want to put a small object in front of it so the first ray goes straight then you have to bend it through f then the third ray would go from the optical center now as you can see the rays are diverging they're not basically coming to the same point so what i'm going to do is so this is the second ray this is the third ray now what i'm going to do is i am gonna extend these lines backwards using my ruler so you can also do it please that would be very nice of you so i'm going to put a dotted line generally we would want to use a dotted line because okay just draw a dotted line like that and also here as well Oh my God, that's bad. So difficult to control this. Okay, finally. So it basically meets here. Somewhere here. Like that. And now I want to show you something, right? This is the object. This is the image. Generally, what happens is if the image basically forms beyond F. Now, if you see the object that you see is basically number one, a virtual image. Now, why it is a virtual image? Because the rays, the original rays do not meet at a point. It just seems like that they're coming from a single point from the same side of the lens. Number two. It is enlarged, as you can see, it's bigger than before. And number three, it is upright. Upright means that it is exactly the same way as the object is. So it's standing the same way. So it's not inverted at all. The example for this is now basically the magnifying glass. This is the magnifying glass. Because if you remember, if you have ever used a magnifying glass, you would realize that actually the words are written like A, B, C, D, E. And if they're very small, you put a magnifying glass around and you put it very close to that object, right? When you put it close, the object, the image appears to be bigger than it is. The third ray? Uh, no. No. It's very difficult to do that then. Because it is beyond, uh, it's before F. And they will not ask you to do that as well. Okay, Adia. So when we um, put the magnifying glass in a distance, like it's, it doesn't show the image in large. Yeah. Why is that? It gets blurred. Yes. Because you see, for the magnifying glass, the focal length of that focal length is very, very small. Do you understand, Aisha? So you need to put it very, very close to it. Otherwise, it would show you it's very, uh, it's a very curved glass. Otherwise, it doesn't show you. It bends a lot uh, when it comes to the rays. So if it's bending a lot, it would not form an image if you put it like far from that object. Is it clear? So you have to put it very close. Yeah. 
and very close means that that object has to be before f of that understood yeah so if you see this is exactly the opposite of what we have learned about the binoculars binoculars have the uh, focal lengths very long this has a very short focal length so you have to bring it very close to that object just like sherlock holmes right kids any questions now please let me know okay now let's check out an example of so you've done this i want to just do one more example and that for that is for diverging this is this is the only thing that they're going to ask you for diverging lens so if this diverging lens so you put a line here just make a line straight this is the optical center let's suppose this is f after three boxes make an f as well one two three four this is two f one two three four this is two f as well now what happens is if you place an object in a diverging lens so diverging lens basically looks like this if you draw it like that so you don't forget about it it basically looks like that now what happens is that if you place an object let's suppose you place an object right here so the first ray is going to go straight and the other ray is going to go like that so in this one you do it like this one and then you make this ray then what happens is that this ray basically has to go through the f but it doesn't it has to diverge away which means you have to make a dotted line let me draw a dotted line here in the backward section like that so basically, if you see, the first ray is going to diverge here, but it seems like that the image is formed here. So if this is the object, this would be the image, like that. In this one, as you can see, it is the properties of this would be number one. It is basically virtual. As you see, the rays do not meet. This ray and this ray should meet. It's not meeting. Yes, Antia, I'll do it again. Don't worry. Again, please. Check this out, please. So I'm going to draw this again. Oh, my God. That's okay. So suppose you have an object like this. Okay, Hadia, Like that. What you do, first ray straight like that. Okay. Now, the rays must go through an F. How do they diverge? They would diverge in the same direction with respect to F. If F is there, they will go here like that. Do you understand, Adia? Actually, this line, oh my goodness, this line never, this line is never created. Like this, this, this. This line is never created, just that it shows a virtual line. It goes like that. When you draw the third ray, you call it like that, you will see that the third ray and the second ray do not meet. They must meet in order to form a, uh, a real image. So where the virtual ray and the third ray meet, that is where you see an object forming. So let me just color it differently, like that. So this is the object, this is the image. That is why, if you see the property, it is a virtual image. Virtual image because the rays do not meet. Number two, it is diminished. Diminished because it's smaller in size than before. And it is also upright because it stands the same way as the original object. Is it clear, Hadia, now? Very good. Any person who finds it difficult, please let me know. Okay, you can draw this, please. Diminished means it is smaller than the actual size of the object. 
they made this smaller than object. Okay, Hassan. The opposite of diminished is enlarged or magnified. Real is when two rays are going to meet the original rays. Virtual is when the two rays would not meet, like you see in this example or in this example. And uh, upright means that it's the same way up as the object. Inverted means it is upside down. So these are the three properties they're going to ask you again and again. Get it? Very nice, kids. Very nice. OK. Should I go forward, please? OK, very nice. So then comes the magnification. Magnification is defined as the ratio of the height of an image divided by the height of the object. Let's write the and this change. OK. Also, we could also find the same ratio of distance of object so distance of image from center of lens divided by distance image and let's talk about it. Not good. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. Okay, okay. Just just second kids. Okay. Is it better now? Do you hear me fine now? OK. Yes, sir. Very good. Now I want to talk about the this whole thing. So suppose if you want to find the magnification of this, right? So what you do is, it's very simple. As you can see, you can find the factor of magnification by, if you see, let's suppose this is 2 centimeters. So you say this is 2 centimeters object. So the magnification here. would be the height of the image. Image height is four boxes. That is two. So it will be four divided by 
2, it comes out to be 2. Do you guys understand that? That's bad. Seems fine. On my screen, that's not good. Okay. Uh, uh, Ibad, is it clear? Yes, sir. Uh, it's a bit clear. Yes, you can use optical center. That's fine. It's the same thing, right? Okay. The other way is that you can find the length. As you can see, it is one, one, two, three, four, five, six boxes. So if you want to find the magnification, you can also do it like this. So you have the image at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, almost twelve boxes, and that's a bit uh, forward. That's why. So twelve divided by six that also gives you two. Is that clear? So it's basically up to you what you want to use. It would be the same. Is it clear, kids? Any questions now? Okay. So this is how magnification can be found. It's pretty simple. Nothing very, very difficult in this. Now, let's look at this question. An object is placed in front of converging lens of focal length 15. What is this? This is f, small f. Then it says, which row describes the image of the object? So it is basically in front of a converging lens of focal length, which describes. Yes. What do you guys say? Now you've got to think. If f is at 15, 2f would be at 30 centimeters. So, what do you guys say? You got to remember the property. Sorry, huh? D. Okay. So, two Ds. See, everybody, please start do this. Go back. Go back. Check all the properties and answer this question, please. D. Okay. Yes. Okay. Why would it be C? C. Okay. Okay. So Hadia says B. One guy says C. Others say D. Okay. I want Hassan's. Please come up with the answer. Mariam, please come up with your answer. Rama, Abdullah, Afraz, Imam. Okay. Maha, Ritaj, Haria, please. Mustafa, Tayyab. Okay. Okay. A lot of people say C. A lot of people say D. Okay. And some, okay, fine, 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 fine. Let me talk about it. It means that the focal point is 15 centimeters. Then 2f will be 30 centimeters because 2f means two times the focal length, right? Now think about it. In the first one, it is beyond 2f. If you place something beyond 2f, it is real. But it is not upright, it is inverted. So that's wrong. Do you guys understand? It is diminished as well. You can see the first case, right, kids? Then if you put it at at 2f, what happens? It is a real image, it is inverted, and it is not enlarged, it is same size. Do you guys get it? Or remember this stuff. Then if you put between like before 2f, what happens is it is a real image. It is a real Im image, but it is not diminished. It is enlarged. And now if you put before f, what happens? It is a virtual image. It is an upward image, and it is enlarged image because this is an example of magnifying glass. Do you guys understand? Now, how would you remember this? It's basically every time we go through this, the first case, which is basically beyond 2f, is the first case we did today. And that was this one. It was beyond 2f. And these are the properties. You've got to remember this, unfortunately. Do you guys understand that? Then the next case they talked about was if you place it here at 2f, so that was case 2.
I don't know why this is happening. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, something messed up happened. Okay, that. So where I was, I went somewhere down. That's not fair. Oh yeah, I was right here. Okay. If you go act to F, I think Ibad, it is your problem. Uh, because I, I can yes, see my screen. Is. Um, I, I, my, I can see my screen going really fast. So uh, I have other screens as well. So it's basically 2F. If you put Sir, this one. Yes. Yes, yes. So the screen is fine. The, your voice is lagging only. Oh, I don't know why. That's, that's bad. OK. So everything is clear, everyone? Any questions now? Should I go forward, please? OK. What about this one, then? So it says, figure one shows a converging lens and the image I formed when an object is placed to the left of the lens. The principal focuses are labeled A and B. So this is F. This is also F. Then says the center of C is given, center of lens is given. And the object, it says draw two rays to locate the position of image and draw the object and label it O. Now the thing is, they have given you this uh, question. But this time, this question isn't like, like we did. It's basically the opposite of it. Why? Because they have given you the image. They haven't given you the object. So what you do? Very simple. Do not worry about it, my friends. Take one, the top point, and use the ruler. OK, use the ruler, please. And you must pass one line from this point through the focal point. So you're going in the reverse uh, way. So this line must pass through the focal point and go to the lens like that. OK. Then you draw one line from the same point. But this time, it must pass through the optical center and should go straight, like, like you've learned. OK. So you take another line, just make it go through the optical center straight like this. Then connect these lines together. like this. And wherever they meet, that is where your object is going to be. Do you guys understand that? So it's basically everything that we learned before, but it's like they've made us to do it in opposite direction. So yeah, clever, right? Do you guys understand that? Any questions here, please? OK. Enlightened us, please, Tariq. How did you do this? I basically did it like uh, we did the previous ones. I didn't change anything, and then it gave me the it gave okay. me the object in, in a similar in a similar manner. It didn't change anything of the answer. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine then. It would give you the same. What I meant is that uh, I drew a line, a ray, mm -hmm. passing uh, through, uh, going straight. And then when okay. it bends, it goes through the focal point A. And the other, line, and the other ray, which uh, I drew, goes through the optical center. Oh, I understand now. So you did like, you did one ray straight. And then you went it like this. Oh, you, you should have gone like that, right? And then like you did this, and then you passed it through here, and then one ray here it would meet somewhere, right? That's what that's how you've done it. Somewhat like that, right? Okay, that's no, no. fine as well. Okay. I meant it it goes straight from the image, straight in a straight line. And uh, when it bends, it goes through the focal point A. Oh, okay. So you're saying you made it like this, and then it goes like this. 
Yes, yes, exactly. And then you draw and you drew this here. That is fine as well. That's a good idea. You can do this as well. That's good. That's fine. Very good. Very good. You learned a new one. I learned something new today. That's good. Okay. Now, ring all the following distances that are equal to the focal length of the lens. What do you guys say? AC and AC and CB. Okay. Yes, everybody else. Mustafa, Ibad, Vibesh, Amos, Aisha. Are you up, please? Manur, Marwan, Marwa, Hassan. Okay. Yes, exactly. Very good kids. You are amazing, by the way. So that means that's going to be this way. This is going to be the focal length, and that's also the focal length. It's the distance from center to the, this. So AB, oh, oh, that's bad. AC and CB. Very good. That's good. That's good. Excellent, kids. Excellent. Now, in this one, it says, a thin converging lens is used to produce a sharp image of a candle. Okay. The various sharp images are produced on moving screen, moving by lens and screen backwards and forwards. Which statement is always correct? Yes. Very good, kids. You guys are very good. Yes, that's correct. It has to be the inverted image because if it forms on the screen, it will be inverted and it is a real image. Very, very good. Excellent, kids. Excellent. All right, so now I'm going to give, this is a very similar uh, example. So I'm going to give this as homework. So you need a lot of practice in this uh, chapter. I want you guys to do this homework. And let me know if you have any issues. You can also try this one. You can try this one. Let me see if there's a magnification somewhere. Yes, you can try this one as well. This, these are all like similar ones that we have just done. Let me see, magnification. Yeah, you have to do this as well as the homework. So a lot of homework on this because I want you guys to practice it a bit. Let me see if there's a magnification thingy in one of these. Also here, homework, very easy one. Oh, by the way, I want to do this one. I want to do this one. I don't want to give this to you as homework because this is an important one. In this different kind of question, they have said, that a thin converging lens is used to produce an image I of an object O. The object O and I is given. Now they say uh, on the screen, so they say, draw a straight line to represent a ray from the tip of arrowhead O to the tip of arrowhead I. OK, let's do that. You have to use the ruler, OK? Not like me. I can snap. Then they say that. Then they say that draw a vertical dotted line to indicate the position of lens. This dotted line must be extended above and below the principal axis. Obviously, wherever this is going to cross it, wherever it's going to cross it, I'm going to put a dotted line here. Why? Because this is the optical center that you're looking at. And optical center is always where the line goes undeviated. Is it clear, kids? Then they say, draw a second ray from the tip of object to tip of our eye. And this ray should pass to principal focus. So now I'm going to make a straight line up till this optical center. And then I'm going to connect this line directly to this. Oh. Now, as you can see, it passes through, oh my god, it passes through this point. So that is the op, uh, the focal point, right? Because it should pass the optical center bends towards that. So I've labeled it F. And then it says determine the focal length. Focal length will be from this. If this is like one centimeter, they have given it. And this is like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, almost 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.65. So I'm going to say. 1.65 centimeters. So from here till here, you got to measure this. This is focal length. Is that clear? 
you too. Would you like to talk about the best? Yeah, is it good. clear? Oh, okay, very good. This is a different kind of question, Rukha. Yes, sorry, come again. How'd you get? I measured the length, right? It says five boxes, five small boxes, maha is one centimeter. So I have to count. This is one, this is one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 12, almost 12 boxes, 12 and a half boxes. So that is 1.65. One, one, five boxes are one centimeter. Do you understand that? Is that wrong? I think I made a mistake here. Huh? It should not be 1.65. It should be bigger than that. There are 12 small boxes, 12.5 boxes, uh, and basically five boxes is equal to one centimeter. So how many will it be? So I think it should be 12 divided by 5. Let me check. What is that? I think I made a mistake. Sorry about that. 12.5 divided by 5. Oh, my God. That should be 2.5. Yeah, it's 2.5. My bad. 2.5 centimeter. Is that clear? No. I think it's now it's correct. Okay, Maha. You just need to measure that length. Should I do it again? So I have a question. Yes. Yes, Aisha. How, how did you figure out where to put the lens? Which lens? Where, where to put the lens? Yes, yes, yes. I, I understand what your question is. You see, the first ray I drew when they said you have to connect a straight line from the top of the object to the, to, uh, to the top tip of this image. Tip of object or tip of image. I drew a straight line. You see the straight line? Yes. It passes through this point on the principal axis? Yeah. Oh, OK. Got it. So that is the optical center. That's how I got to know that this is the lens. Is that clear? And? Yes. And then? I drew the first ray and then I bent it from the lens to that and I got to know where it passes. This will be the focal length. Is that clear? Then I measured the number of boxes from here till the focal point. I found these to be 12.5 small boxes. If five boxes are one centimeter, what will be the length of 12.5 boxes? It came out to be 2.5 centimeter. Understood? Like that. Okay. All right. Is there any other question, please? Let me help you with that. Okay. Now, kids, the next is the image is further from the lens than O, and I is described as enlarged and inverted. State and explain one other characteristic. What is the other characteristic of this? Yes, kids. Excellent. Real image. And you got to explain that, that as well. Why? Because, why is it because, yes, because it is projected onto a screen, yes, because the rays meet at a point. Is that clear, kids? That's why. Yes, very good, very good, Ravya, very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent job. Yes, very good, Mariam. Excellent job. Very nice. Okay. Now, the next, you got to do this on your own. Same goes for this one. Try to do this on your own. If you do not understand this, do let me know. Okay. Some of these, these are again the same thing. Very easy things. Please remember this. Homework as well. A lot of homework in this. So make sure that you do this homework as well. And nothing really else is difficult homework as well. A lot of homework in this. I want you guys to practice it a lot because as you see, every paper has like two, three questions of it. We don't want to miss this chapter out. So I guess we would be, um, yeah, fine. This is also pretty simple. Homework. 
this is also quite simple. This is just like the first one. It's a repeated sort of question. Okay. And this is the one that we just did. So if you have understood the last question I made you, I like I did, you will also be able to do it. They've given object image. They've asked you to draw from tip to tip. This is the same uh, kind of question. Okay. So I don't know what happened here. So it says, Okay, this is the same uh, question, so you can do this as well. Anyhow, the last thing we're going to do, kids, is this one, and this is the spectacles question. Now, we need to basically have an idea of short-sightedness and long-sightedness. Now, short-sightedness is basically a property, I just want to tell you, that closer objects are seen clearly, but objects farther are blurred. This is what short-sightedness is. Like the word says, short-sightedness, which means in the short distance, you are able to see. OK, kids, is that clear to you? Whereas the long-sightedness, is that closer objects are blurred, distant objects are seen clearly. Okay. Now, why is this happening? This is what you got to do. Okay. You can write this down first. Oh my God, that's not fair. And then I'll explain this to you. Okay. So what happens is that if you have like, uh, you know, rays coming from really, really far away, your eyes basically bend them more, and there's a the, your eyeball is not functioning correctly. The lens in your eyes, so they bend it closer instead on the screen, so it gets blurred. To fix this, what we do is we gotta use a diverging lens because it's bending more than it should. So a diverging lens is used. Look at my diverging lens; how bad it looks. Now, what does diverging lens do? It causes the rays to bend away first. And then, because your eyeball is already bending it too much, so the rays which are diverged, it will bend them correctly now onto the retina. Now, most of you, like I also wear glasses now, because I can see uh, distant objects very clearly. So the glasses that you have are basically the diverging lens all right so we can say that eyeball bends light more than it should hence diverging lens are used to diverge it more so lens so eyeball bends it correctly to retina this is the issue okay then in the closer objects what happens is your eyeball fails to bend the light a lot so it doesn't bend it a lot. So it basically forms behind the retina. Again, it is blurred. We don't want to get it blurred. So what you do, you put a converging lens like that. Now, what does the converging lens do? It causes the objects, like it causes the light to bend more before so that when it bends, 
even further, it bends less, so it should meet correctly on the retina, right? So in this case, in this scenario, the issue is that the issue is that eyeball does not bend light enough. So to, to make it bend to the retina, we use a converging lens to preemptly bend it before it enters the eye. Like that. All right, kids. So that's how it works. Remember this. Preemptly. So we got to do it like you guys need to understand. Short-sighted means that you are good at looking at things which are closer. Long-sighted means you're not good at things uh, you're good at looking at things that are distant. So please remember this, and you will be able to remember this like that. All right, kids. So that's pretty good. So in life chapter, the most of the questions come from optics. So that's why I've given you long homework. When you do this, next week, inshallah, when we meet, uh, you got to ask me. Converging lens is the... the the lens we just studied, Maha, that lens, the curved one, this is converging. That converges rays into a single point. This is the diverging lens. Goes away like that. Get it? Oh, what is after? Converging lens to preemptly. Okay, let me write it nicely. My bad. Pre empt. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Love, sir. Love, sir.